Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're looking at another external GPU, which is a topic we've covered a few times in the past. This time we're reviewing the Gigabyte RX 580 Gaming Box, which joins the Aorus GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 Gaming Boxes in Gigabyte's lineup. This is the first time we've looked at an AMD external GPU solution, so that'll be a bit interesting. And of course, I'll be discussing some performance numbers later in the video. The basic design to the RX 580 gaming box is effectively identical to Gigabyte's other eGPUs. It's an extremely compact housing, much more compact than build-it-yourself eGPUs from companies like Razer, and it houses a specially built graphics card with a custom small form factor cooler. Gigabyte's eGPUs are ridiculously compact in comparison to something like the Razer Core or Alienware graphics amplifier, and that's why I like them so much. The other key advantage to the gaming box is it actually includes a GPU inside, so you don't need to purchase the eGPU housing and then source your own graphics card. The RX 580 Gaming Box is the cheapest eGPU Gigabyte has produced at $550 US dollars, so the enclosure itself is valued at about $250 when you consider the cheapest RX 580 8GB models, it's selling these days for $300 or so. Not as good value as the GTX 1070 or GTX 1080 boxes, and there's something I'll discuss in more detail a bit later, but it's similar to other eGPU enclosures on the market. If you've seen my coverage on the GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 gaming boxes, you'll be familiar with the overall design of the RX 580 gaming box, considering Gigabyte basically recycled it. The entire chassis is constructed from industrial metal with two large vents on either side. One provides air to the GPU and the other to the power supply. The front is a simple metal sheet with the Gigabyte logo on it, while the back includes direct access to the GPU ports, along with a few additional I.O. options. As this is a mostly standard RX 580, you get three DisplayPort outputs and one HDMI out directly from the graphics card. In addition, the gaming box gives you three USB 3.0 ports and an orange quick charge 3.0 USB port, all of which connect through the Thunderbolt 3 cable to your laptop or other device. The box also, of course, requires wall power and will charge your laptop through Thunderbolt 3 if that's supported. The box's internal layout is simple and taking the unit part is pretty much a breeze. One half is allocated to the compact GPU and the other to the power supply. Two small fans on the PSU side help provide additional airflow into the case and the PSU itself has a rear exhaust fan. These tiny 25mm fans can be a bit noisy when idle, but during full load it is drowned out by the graphics card fan. The box isn't especially quiet when fully utilised, but I wouldn't say it's loud either. Upgradability though is a pretty limited affair with the gaming box. You do get two slots worth of space, but length and height are serious concerns, so you'd need to find a super compact mini ITX style card if you wanted to upgrade, and even then I'm not convinced all compact cards would fit. Luckily, the 450 watt power supply with 80 plus gold level efficiency shouldn't present a power problem if you do want to upgrade. And if you are planning to pull out the RX 580 from the gaming box to use in another system, again you will have to be careful. The exposed 120mm fan on the cooler extends well beyond the bottom edge of the heatsink, leaving just a few millimeters of clearance between the fan blades and the motherboard. Most desktop boards don't really have that sort of clearance. As is the case with most eGPUs on the market, the RX 580 gaming box connects over Thunderbolt 3, and the setup process is extremely straightforward, provided your laptop supports Thunderbolt 3. Just plug in the box, it powers itself up, then you simply allow the device to connect when the Thunderbolt 3 utility pops up, and should begin working. A basic set of drivers is installed automatically too, just like with NVIDIA eGPUs. From there, the whole process of using the gaming box is super simple. You plug in the box to your system and the box will automatically turn on and switch to using external graphics. Unplug the box, it powers down automatically and switches the system back to its internal graphics. You don't have to switch anything yourself, the entire process works smoothly and perfectly every single time. However, there are some tips and tricks to get the best performance out of your eGPU. There are two display options you can choose from. Either you can use an external display hooked up directly to the GPU outputs on the gaming box, or you can let the box pass back a display signal to your laptop's display if you don't have an external display hooked up. Passing the display signal back to your laptop sucks up some valuable Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth and noticeably hurts performance, so we always recommend using an external display for gaming, and we tested the system like that. Also, I don't recommend using the USB USB ports on the gaming box while gaming either, as that too sucks up Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth and can introduce performance drops and stuttering. You really need to save every last drop of Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth for the GPU to get the best performance, so stick to using the USB ports when you're not gaming. 
So let's talk performance. For this review, I'm going to be discussing how the RX 580 gaming box performs in a handful of games at both 1080p and 1440p, so you can get an idea of what sort of experience to expect. I'm not going to be focusing on comparisons to other gaming boxes because we already know how the RX 580 stacks up against the GTX 1070, GTX 1060, and so forth. Just watch some of our previous coverage if you're interested in that. But of course, there are some limitations to external GPUs that prevent you from getting desktop class performance through Thunderbolt 3. Bandwidth and latency are the primary concerns. Thunderbolt 3 latency introduces a performance penalty to any graphics card attached to any system. So no matter how fast your CPU or GPU is, the eGPU setup will never reach proper desktop level performance from identical components. While this does hurt performance overall, the latency penalty levels the playing field among mobile CPUs. The difference in performance between an eGPU attached to a 15 watt U series laptop and a 45 watt H series laptop is only a couple of percent. In other words, there's little advantage to using a processor like the 6-core Core i7-8750H over the quad-core Core i7-8550U, provided you have a full 4-lane Thunderbolt 3 connection at your disposal. It's also important to note that the latency penalty is not a true bottleneck of sorts. A GTX 1080e GPU will still outperform a GTX 1070e GPU by margins roughly similar to those cards in desktop systems, but the performance of each of those cards is limited by Thunderbolt 3's latency. The GTX 1080 isn't capped to GTX 1070 level performance, instead the latency penalty caps any card's performance to roughly 80% of what you get in a desktop system. If you do have a two-lane Thunderbolt 3 device like some older Dell XPS laptops, you will be hitting a bandwidth cap on top of the latency penalty, and that hurts performance by approximately 10%. That's the background information about eGPU performance that you need to know. For testing the RX 580 gaming box, I use the Gigabyte Aero 15X, which has a 6-core Core i7-8750H inside, along with 16 gig of DDR4 2666 memory and a 4-lane Thunderbolt 3 port. At the moment, this is pretty much the best case laptop test platform for an eGPU, but even if you have a less powerful laptop like something with an 8th gen U-series CPU, you'll only be looking at a performance drop of a couple of percent at worst. Let's kick things off by looking at Watch Dogs 2 performance. Running at 1080p with the medium quality preset, we're getting around 50 FPS average and a 37 FPS 1% low, which is quite respectable. Not the best experience you'll ever see, but definitely playable. And if you lift that up to 1440p, you still get around 40 FPS with a 1% low above 30 FPS. Prey, on the other hand, is not looking good. This is a game that is heavily impacted by the latency penalty, producing just a 22 FPS 1% low at 1080p with the very high preset. A proper GTX 1060 gaming laptop pushes well above 60 FPS 1% low in this title at the same quality setting, so it's clear the RX 580e GPU is well behind in this title. Middle Earth Shadow of War is a game I'd class as quite playable on the RX 580 gaming box, provided you choose the right quality settings. I tested with the high preset and got a 55 FPS average at 1080p and a 1% low above 30 FPS, though to play at 1440p you might want to turn down a few settings. I'm only going to briefly talk about Assassin's Creed Origins because even the medium preset at 1080p was completely unplayable on the RX 580 gaming box. This game is comfortably playable on a GTX 1060 laptop, but an RX 580e GPU unfortunately doesn't cut it. Star Wars Battlefront 2 runs really well on the RX 580 gaming box. We're looking at 60 FPS average at 1080p with ultra settings and a 1% low of 42 FPS. You could quite comfortably play at 1440p if you want, as that drops the average frame rate down to just 45 FPS while maintaining a 35 FPS 1% low. Turn down a few quality settings at 1440p and hitting a 60 FPS average is quite easy. Battlefield 1 runs reasonably well whether you're gaming at 1080p or 1440p. Both hit 1% lows above 30 FPS, and if you turn down the quality settings from Ultra, you can get a decent experience here, though the game is less playable in actual multiplayer battles. The final two games we have are Dirt 4, which is another title that gets absolutely obliterated by the latency penalty with way lower than expected performance for this GPU, and Far Cry 5, which runs really well. Even using the Ultra preset in Far Cry 5, I was able to hit a 42 FPS average with a tight 35 FPS 1% low, and that was only reduced marginally when gaming at 1440p. So there aren't too many surprises in regards to how the RX 580 gaming box performs. It can transform a laptop with weak integrated graphics or an entry-level discrete GPU like the MX150 into a decent enough 1080p gaming machine, provided you are willing to game at mid-tier quality settings at around 60 FPS.
FPS or lower. In some situations, it might also be good for 1440p gaming, considering the performance penalty moving from 1080p to 1440p is a surprisingly low 15 to 20 percent. But as with a lot of external GPUs, there are many things to consider. The RX 580 gaming box, when hooked up to even a Core i7 8750H, is nowhere near as fast as a proper GTX 1060 or RX 580 gaming laptop. You're looking at upwards of 40 percent more performance from a GTX 1060 laptop, if not double the performance in latency impacted titles. The cheapest GTX 1060 laptops are around a thousand bucks these days, and that's a full system, it's not just an eGPU. The closest performing system to the RX 580 gaming box is a laptop with the GTX 1050 or GTX 1050 Ti inside, so it only really makes sense to get the RX 580 gaming box if your existing system has worse than 1050 level graphics. We're talking MX150 or integrated graphics here, which makes the RX 580 gaming box an upgrade on just the most basic laptop solutions. And even then, I probably wouldn't recommend it. The GTX 1070 gaming box, also from Gigabyte, is just $50 more than the RX 580 model, yet it includes a GPU that's currently $200 more expensive on the standalone market. That's much better value because for just 10% more money, you can expect at least 30% more performance. Plus, of course, for a lot of users that just want a system capable of gaming, it makes more sense to go out and buy an entire gaming PC. eGPUs are still a pretty niche product, and I think they will remain in that category until we see a better interface than Thunderbolt 3 come along so we can not get that latency penalty anymore. I could see the RX 580 gaming box be a useful purchase for Mac owners as this eGPU does support Macs, whereas Nvidia's eGPUs are not officially supported. But for most other buyers looking at an external graphics box for gaming with a Windows machine, I would point you towards the GTX 1070 gaming box instead. That's it for this review of the RX 580 gaming box. There are links to check the current prices for all of Gigabyte's eGPUs in the description below. Subscribe to Hardware Unboxed for more testing like this of eGPUs and all sorts of other content, and I'll catch you in the next one.